and for more on coding and its impact, we're joined here in studio by Dr. Bright Mawudur, a cybersecurity engineer and researcher and head of services at Internet Solutions Kenya. We also have Michael Chesang, a 14-year-old student at St. Christopher's High School who started coding at the age of 12. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Mawudur, let's begin with you. How important is coding, especially in Africa? Um, coding is changing the mindset of, of of everyone is helping to make things faster, getting things to be automated. And we see the coding culture, as you can see the nine year old coding uh, inside the language, it's pretty impressive. And I personally started coding when I was seven. And uh, that has changed my mindset of how to look at things. And you see with the kind of technological uh, um, industry that we're looking at right now in the world, and uh, not just in Africa, we are seeing that things are changing. And the only way we can actually get to advance in, in, or in other countries is just to make sure that we start coding at a very young age. So a lot of things are getting to change. People are making more money out of it. It's, it's, it's closing the gap of unemployment. Because right now, these days, you don't, have to, you don't have to go to any school to learn coding. You can learn basically from home and make money just by, just by making a few programs here and there in, the, in your living room. Right. Yeah. Okay, so Michael, you started coding at the age of 12. 12, that's pretty young. I know he started at 7. Yeah, What's yeah. been your experience with it? Well, it was at first I was doing it for making games. Right. Then later on I went to like cyber, making it for cyber security and automating most of the things. That sounds like heavy stuff, man. At 12 years you're thinking about cyber security? Yes. <laughs> so what have, you, what have you done when it comes to the cyber security program? Well, I made a script called XLIME, and this is an application where it decompiles applications, Android applications, adds strips of code, make it malicious. And once it's malicious, let's say I give it to you, I can have control of your phone, I can check your call logs, check your SMSs, take screenshots, and activate your webcam. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, listening to Michael, Dr. Mawudur, yeah. him talking about all of this stuff, it brings me to what you mentioned earlier about you know, solving some of the challenges we've been going through here in the continent. So how, how do you see coding actually becoming a solution to some of those problems? What can Africa do, especially given the huge numbers we have yeah. of unemployed youths? Yeah. The, if you look at the past five years, mm. there has been an increase in technological hubs. Those hubs are basically to, to help people to innovate, help them to be able to come up with ideas that can actually solve real life problems. Mm -hmm. Right now you see people are coding uh, applications that can predict malaria spread in another county before it happens in six months. So here's the thing that we have been trying, I mean, looking at the way people have started coding, um, the coding culture has changed, especially in Kenya and Ghana. Um, those are the two places that I've been watching in Nigeria as well. The, the coding culture has changed. You see so many software developers coding at various, I mean, young ages. You see, usually back in the day, you think a coder has to be 25, 26. Right. These days, the youngest coder I'm seeing is Michael, who is 14 years old. Man, when I started mentoring him and he started coding in Python, I was like, wait, how did you learn how to do that? I just gave him basics. But you see, the way, the way they are exposed to technology right now, mm -hmm. they're exposed to research, they're exposed to ways they can learn by themselves. It makes it quite easy. So the culture has completely changed and we are seeing a lot of people getting employed by themselves. Either work in a company for one, two years, mm -hmm. they set up their own company. A lot of them are doing a lot of online work. He gets to be paid a bit for finding vulnerabilities and bugs and systems and applications. and. I mean, it's, it's becoming a very nice culture to say. Okay, so yeah. Michael, you're getting paid for coding <laughs> at 14. <laughs> Talk to us about that. How is that going for you? Well, it's going great. Uh, so basically, when you find vulnerabilities or you make scripts on applications, and then I can, once I publish them, I get paid for, for publishing it. Yeah? Yes. So how do you see this panning out for you in the future? Well, is this something you want to pursue all the way till maybe... I don't know, you're 30? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, how has it helped you as an individual? Well, it's actually changed my pers perspective in life. It's helped me think outside the box, be creative. Uh, and it's just opened me a whole new world for me, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mawudur, coming to you, I know there's a lot of um, risks associated with internet and children. Is coding an exception? It's not. I mean, the thing is, when you're coding, people think coding is just creating programs. Coding is also being able to interact with pro programs that already, already exist. 
Um, let's talk about the gaming culture. Mm -hmm. The gaming culture in the East um, is, is something that is considered even as a, as a full-time job. I see people who get addicted to that and they can't even leave it. Um, I'll take a typical example of him. He hasn't slept for some time <laughs> when he's on holidays. He has too much access to be able to practice and try things a lot. So I have to try to control him as to when he has to sleep, tell him not to go too much because it becomes a thing of, it gets addictive. So now we don't want to get the culture where people don't sleep because of coding. So there can be some little bit of negative aspect to it, but we don't want to also discourage the young ones from being able to code. So it gets addictive and coders can spend a long time. If he starts right now, if you ask him, I, I bet if he starts from 6 a.m., the next time he's seeing the bed is probably 11 p.m. You know, and then by the next three, four hours, he's waking up again. We want to change that and be able to make sure that it's something that is fun to do, but as well also does not affect our mental uh, stability and how we actually perceive things. Okay, yeah. so as we wrap up, Michael, he said you didn't sleep and he admitted it could be addictive. And yes. I'm told you were up from 3 a.m. this morning. Yes. Are you addicted to it? Uh, yes, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what do your parents feel about it? Well, my parents, uh, first of all, they think like I'm a god, I can fix anything in the house, that's technical, <laughs> but really once I explain it to them, they are proud of me and I'm happy. Brilliant. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming to the studio. Thank you so much. We had today you. Dr. Bright Mawudur, a cybersecurity engineer and researcher, and we had Michael Chisang, a 14-year-old student who's doing